All right, good morning to everybody. This is Kel once again. Can you hear me loud and clear? If you just give me a thumbs up, or put the word L and C right into the comment box here. Yeah? Thank you very much. Yeah, we've got to start in a very short moment time. I'm trying to uh, share my stuff online right now. Seemingly there's some little problem, technical problem here. All right, good morning to you, Dennis, Louis, Panjit from Cambodia, I believe, and uh, Alison, Janet. All right, good to see you guys once again. Okay, we're going to start our MAO very, very shortly. Just give me a moment then to get the way up. Seemingly, it's just uh, jamming up all the way. All right, uh, never mind. Let me just get this thing up first. Okay, let me just go live right now to Cambodia site. Here we go. Oh, Panjit is from Thailand. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Sorry for that, Panjit. Sorry. Thank you for joining us live today. Thanks, uh, Louis, for uh, telling me that. Because recently we just did a preview in Cambodia and the result was pretty good, pretty positive. So that's the reason why I thought that there are friends who are actually coming from Cambodia side now. Okay, all right. Um, I think you're almost done, almost ready. All right, let's just start our this uh, MAO right now. Ah, I see. Hi, Maurice. Good to see you. Hi, Edwin. Good to see you. I see Louis. All right. So she's our contact from Thailand. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Let's just start our MEO right now this morning, shall we? Okay. First of all, today is the 24th of January, 2022. Today is a fresh week start of the day, of the week, Monday. Now, from the background, you can see that we have a lot of things to cover today. We have crude oil prices looking at 100 US dollar per barrel. So this is one of the things that people are all speculating right now. Then of course, Japan, my goodness, the COVID cases in Japan is getting high again. And this time around itself, right, it's even higher than the last time. So would this create a problem for the, Japan, uh, the uh, Japanese in terms of economy? We'll look at it later. And of course, this week itself is very important for Ukraine and US and Russia because this is something that you know, everybody's very worried because anytime if there's anybody making a little bit of a mistake around the borders, this will become a very big problem for the whole world. And of course, this coming uh, Tuesday, Wednesday is tomorrow and Wednesday, we have the FOMC meeting. And there are lots of speculation saying that there could be a potential of a rate hike as early as March. And there's even some speculation saying that there could be a form of like reducing of balance sheet of more than $100 billion by Goldman Sachs. And really, this is what is a speculation ongoing right now. So we'll be covering that also later on, all right? So once again, it's all right, guys. This is going to be a very impactful MAO. MAO stands for Market Analysis and Outlook. So, and this is live right now. You can like and forward this, share this with your friends, and it's absolutely free. That's not, it's not a preview. So we're not going to sell you anything. It's just about we. we uh, myself reviewing what I see in the financial market and I'll later on I'll do some technical analysis regarding of how I see and feel about what to do for today's market all right so do like and share and tell your friends that this guy can listen and uh, enjoy okay let's go 
So market is very oversold. That's the first thing that I want to tell you. So, so that's why I believe that a rebound before the coming FOMC. I believe that today the market will likely rebound a bit, technically a bit, because overall most of the indicators are pretty oversold. But will this actually sustain? No, I don't think so. So later on during my technical analysis, I'll explain to you why I feel that maybe we should be very careful as we move towards this um, month of February, because I suspect that month of February, the selling could be even harder than what we are seeing right now. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm actually um, sharing this with you. Okay, let's go. Now, disclaimer apply as usual. My friends, everything is that I'm here to just tell you what I see in the market. Your job is to do your own risk management. Now, I'm not able to tell you what to do. So you have to consider the fact that you have to do your own uh, analysis on your own. Okay, so once you have done that itself, right? And if you, let's say you agree with what I share, then of course do your own risk management so that you can actually profit on your own, yeah? This is very, very important, okay? All right. Now, Wall Street joke of the day. Let's take a look now. This is the three monkeys, right? We know that, that's all, but of course, when you put it in Wall Street, it's like, hear no data, see no data, and do no maths. Of course, this is more like a fun thing itself, which I think the author had purposely do it. But if you actually look carefully, it is actually happening right now. As you can see that the US stock market, the data are pretty bad. We have the, the jobless claims all going up. The, this um, last month, we have very bad non-farm payroll and the earnings itself, right, is all going down despite that we have a very strong quarter last year. So with all this thing itself, right, you can see that more and more people are jumping in the market to try to buy cheap. Now, I'm not saying that they are wrong this round, but you know, the last 10 days, if you've been buying all the way down, you've been in serious trouble. Today, today, I believe if you buy will be a bit better. And of course, there could be a technical rebound these two days. But after that, I believe that there could be more selling to come. So that's the reason why I kind of like quite worried for many people because they will be cutting losses today. Then after that, maybe the market will rebound for a couple of days and they will chase back in again at a high. And unfortunately, it's all right. This could be the turning point once again. So that's the reason why I felt that this uh, joke of the day really spells out why people usually they do not follow the data, they do not follow the boys, and they trade with their own gut feel, and usually they may get it uh, badly hit by the market. Yeah. So let's just take a look at what I shared last week. Now, last week when I was sharing with you about my DEX, right, I said that the DEX will go down. I believe that the DEX will get down further, and the figure that I was telling you guys was this figure, if you remember. I was looking at the DEX to come down and I was looking at either 15,557 or worse, 15,490. That was what I said on the 21st of January in the morning. And I say that, right, the market may be going down much lower due to the uh, expectation of more selling by DEX. All right, and of course, what happened is take a look and truth be told, the market sold down even more than I expected. So you can see that I already circled the area and I said that it will come down and truth be told, the market really came down more because I was predicting that it will stop around 490, but instead it closed about 450. So 40 more points than my target, but okay, la, I will say that I was pretty correct because some people calling for buy, I say no, I call for sell instead and really DEX came down. So for DEX, right, I was kind of uh, spot on here. Yeah? So if you can do me a favor, key the word DEX spot on for me. Thank you very much. Okay, so I was uh, okay with my DEX, but of course the other one that was uh, pretty decent with that is my next call, whereby I mentioned that the crude oil will go down first and then go back up again. Now I gave this drawing and said that DEX, I mean sorry, crude oil will come down to about $81.20 and then after that it will recover back again to $85. So that was what I forecast again on the 21st of January in the morning. And of course, what actually happened, if you take a look itself, you can see for your own, you can see that the DEX actually really came down, I'm sorry, the crude oil really came down, but of course the downside was not enough to hit my 81.20 and now it's back up again to 85.70. So it's again 
following the script that I mentioned. And I also, obviously, I put down there, the market will go to $85. And indeed, it really happened as I was speaking right now. So again, this basically shows you evidently that right our TWB system, as long as you follow it, and all the numbers are on your screen, you just have to you know trust on it, and you should be able to make some profit. So for my crude oil now, as of now, pretty spot on, yeah? So I was pretty spot on for my crude and my this uh, DEX uh, as of Friday. Now, in fact, Friday, I did say that, right, most likely the market will be coming off or bottoming out soon for the US market. So Friday, we saw more selling coming in, so that one a bit wrong. But I did say that it's either Friday or Monday, the market will likely be bottoming out. So I believe that it's Friday, if I miss it out, right, then today, most likely the market should be able to bottom up. So that's why today, since morning is all right, we have covered most of our short position and we are going long at the moment right now. I repeat, for today's market, I suspect that the US market is going to recover. So that's why this morning, early morning, I already told my students to cover back their shorts and consider to go long. And now we are already in profitable position, yeah? All right, but again, once again, this is a live uh, market analysis. So it's about an hour long. If you like what you hear right now, you can like and share this with your friends. It's absolutely free. This is not a preview. This is actually for me, to, it's a stage for me to just share with people about my market view. Now, I only do this live uh, to outside, I mean, to public members on Monday and Friday. Tuesday to Thursday is only for in-house for our own students, yeah? Okay. All right, let's take a look what happened on the... Um, on the uh, economic front. Now, what we're gonna have this week is gonna be pretty heavy. We have the um, consumer confidence coming up um, tomorrow and the confidence level seem that they have dropped. So the market previously was 115.8. This time around, they're looking at a lower number. So that shows that the market is kind of worried huh, about this current uh, situation right now. Okay, then of course on Wednesday, we have our new home sales. Okay, the home sales are looking at a better number, but I don't think so because of the lumber price that's coming off. I think the number will be lower. And of course, I believe that the crude oil inventory is now, it went down from a million, from 4 million barrels all the way down to less than half a million. So I suspect that the inventories will be on the same area. But more important is Thursday in the morning, Singapore time, 3 a.m. That, yeah, 3 a.m., yeah, that's where the Fair Reserve will have, uh, you know, come out and finish a meeting. And most likely they will keep the interest rate the same for now, but they likely will tell you that maybe in March, the interest rate may be going up. So that's why I suspect that the market itself right, will go into some profit taking uh, by Wednesday. So let's see whether am I right. So of course, on the, th on the same Thursday itself, there's a lot of other data like the core durable goods, the GDP numbers, initial jobless claim and the pending home sales. So do know on Thursday, we will have our guess and win um, game for our own student on Thursday to guess what is the initial jobless claims figure, all right? The winner will get home, will bring home 22.88 ADA coins, okay? All right. All right, let's look at look what happened on Friday. Now, the US market was kind of sideways in the first two hours of the market. But after that, during the lunchtime period, you can see that the market decided to take some profit. And one leads to the other, the selling keep on accelerating to the point that they lost 450 points. Now, recently, so we have seen enough time that the US market is actually coming off at the last two hours of the day. That means that right in the daytime itself, in the morning period, the market usually go up. But then by afternoon period, that's where by the market to take profit. Now, this is a very, very, um, uh, it's a pattern that we observe when the market is in a downtrend or there's some distribution because that means that they are looking to buy in the morning and then they sell in the uh, afternoon. So that is actually a very bad sign that the market could be going down more in the time to come. So of course, when everybody's on one side and telling you that, hey, this is the best thing to do, like most likely today or tomorrow, the market may do it differently. But after that itself, right, the market may still be going down once again. So that is the reason why I say that today and tomorrow, the market may do a technical rebound. And then after that, the market may resume selling again. <coughs> so let's take a look right now on the uh, US correspondence side. NASDAQ tumbled 2% on Friday, not just this worst week ever since 2020, and fall deeper into the correction territory. Now, um, correction territory is like what I mentioned itself is between 10% to minus 10% from the all-time high 
to minus 15%. So now we are actually about minus 13%. We are pretty near to the minus 15%. And I believe that the market is somewhere near a technical rebound soon. All right, later I'll show you the charts better. So let's take a look what happened first. Now we all know that the NASDAQ has been coming down. I've been calling for sell on NASDAQ for the longest of time because I told you guys, once the tapering starts to come in itself, right, the NASDAQ will be falling. And of course, after tapering will be interest rate hiking. Now we all know that in last year, about October, there were no uh, one calling for a NASDAQ top, which I was so few first few to call for it because I believe the tapering is going to tampen the market movement. And I did say that, right, the NASDAQ will drop by around 10 to 15%, which is not really happening. But more important thing is that I did say that, right, okay, um, the interest rate hiking will start to come in soon. But back then, it's all right, Federal Reserve says that there will be no hike until 2023. But of course, by November, everything changes as inflation starts to creep in strongly. And what happened now, there are even speculation of four to even five rate hike in a single year which is 2022. So of course, what will naturally be happening, the stock market will be coming off, yeah? So you can see right now, the Dow Jones and S&P is down for the third straight week. And this is the worst week ever since 2020. And S&P now is more than 8% off the high. Now it was like less than a percent of all time high. And there's a lot of fund managers, experts, strategies calling for further upside, which I say that no, the market will go down. And instead the market really, really go down, yeah? So now you can see that right, the NASDAQ is really in the worst period ever. It's a similar, almost contrasting, um, it's a similar pattern as what happened in 2008. That was before the Lehman crisis. So look at it. It seems that it's just basically mimicking the entire movement for the first 15 days of the month. So of course, this actually spelled trouble because in 2008, the market continued to slide all the way until March 2009. So of course, things may get worse if this is going to continue because um, we, we did see that when the labor really brothers time, the market dropped by 54% from the all-time high. So for me, it's some, I don't think the market dropped by 54%, but to drop by 15% to even 20% in my books itself is pretty, pretty um, kind of expected. But again, the market won't drop in a straight line. I believe that there'll be a rebound today and tomorrow then maybe we're going to see some selling again. So do note, now the one of the catalysts of the selling recently was Netflix. Now Netflix earning was okay. It was pretty decent, but it was their forecast that it was bad. And that was where the market dropped by 20% on its share price last Friday. So now the thing is this, this next week, we will have Apple, we have Tesla, we have this, um, this um, Google, coming out alphabet, lah, coming out their data. So be very careful because I suspect that it will be the same. It will be the same. The market will be like expecting a not so good forecast for this next coming quarter because of the interest rate environment that will likely be um, coming into the picture. All right. So now the thing is this, uh, overall it's all, but there's some people who are more positive. They feel that right, even though there'll be some rate hike, it would not be a big thing, you know, it will be a problem. They don't think that it will derail the economy recovery. They feel that the market will still be good. But of course, the selling intensified in every every night itself, right? Or every evening for US market, it seems to be a very troubling pattern and traders are kind of worried. So that's why most people now are doing the same thing, meaning by about 2, 3 a.m. Singapore time, they start to look into some selling and of course they have been performing. But of course, when everything is it's so simple, usually it will change the way around. Now, of course, we can see now, right, more articles are showing that the final hour of trading has got a bit serious and people are getting worried. They feel that now maybe the bigger and the bigger or the institutionals are actually selling. So there's this thing called dumb money buy in the morning and bigger smart money sell in the evening. So of course, question mark, is this, is this going to be the true well, I believe that this two day, this will flip away and people will just forget about it. Then after that, it will resume once again. So traders do take note that things may get a little bit dicey as we approach the next few days in the market, yeah? Now, of course, we all know that, right, tech stock has the worst week and of course, uh, counter like Peloton, Netflix are the one that probably leads the selling recently. So now with the tech earning coming out, right? IBM coming out today and then followed by Microsoft and Intel on Wednesday, we do suspect that, right? There could be more uh, volatility in the technology sector. 
And of course, uh, people are looking at the uh, bid to be like looking for whether it's a good time to do some bottom buying. Now, I will say that, right, if you want to do some bottom buying, this two days is fine. But after you make some profit, you must learn how to get out because I don't think the market will stay up too long. Okay, so I've done for you the research for you. Now, um, we have uh, the data already from Netflix on Thursday. So today with IBM, the bigger one, uh, the one that is more popular. Then after that, we have Microsoft on Tuesday. And the big one is Tesla on, on Wednesday. So Tesla earnings is expected to be good. So that's why I suspect that the market itself may be uh, buying ahead of this. But of course, the forecast may not be fantastic. And that may bring the market down further. Now, Boeing is also coming on Wednesday, and Boeing is a very big catalyst in the S&P 500. So if Boeing numbers are good, this may push a little bit more for the market. Yeah, And of course, on Thursday, we have Apple, and on Friday, we have Caterpillar. Alphabet will be next Tuesday, and Meta will be on next uh, Wednesday. So all these numbers is going to be the one that's going to play around the market, and I suspect that it will be good initially, but selling should come next very soon. Yeah. Okay, so I hopefully you guys uh, think note of the data to watch out for. Thank you very much. Now, do know AMD and Amazon, uh, they are not scheduled their data earnings yet. So we'll wait for a while for the these two counter. Now, AMD is a very strong counter for the last three years. So that's why we suspect the AMD number may hold the market a bit. But Amazon, I believe that Amazon number will be quite bad. Yeah, so this is something to be very worried about. Okay, so now I want to share with you first the charts that I, the chart that I shared with you last week. Take a look, everybody. Now you can see from your chart itself, right? The this is the two hundred day moving average, and what I did was that I used the um, closing the the source as low to to do the parameter. So I did mention to you that last time when the market hit the MA two hundred, the market almost instantly the next day rebounded. So now what we saw was that the market actually did go below, but the market did not rebound. The market sold down further. So what I did was I take the recent low here to combine with this area and I did an extension. I realized that the market did find support. And now the best thing is this, it also seemingly finds support. And now the RSI, if you look at the chart now, the RSI are actually near the RSI 30. So if let's say, if you look at it, right, most likely it's all right, the market may do a technical rebound. The market may do a technical rebound this coming few days. So I suspect that the rebound itself will not be a lot, but it maybe should be able to go back to maybe the MA 200 level. And uh, that will be about 34,600 to 700 area. So today we close at 34,265. So I suspect that the market may rebound about 400 to 500 points first before the market starts to sell down again. Now do note, in my opinion, it's all right. The market can come down all the way to 33,258 for the cash market. But if things get worse and drastic, right? It may go all the way down to 32,000, yeah? It may go all the way down to 32,000 in the coming, uh, the coming uh, weeks because I suspect that the market will be much weaker than expected and this will bring the market down further. Yeah. Just give me a moment. Okay, so that is something to watch out for. So be careful. A rebound should be in uh should be around the next two days, but the market is all right, might be a bit of uh uh uh, a bit of a uh, rebound on a dead cat rebound, but it may not sustain. Huh? So that's why I think about that. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened on Friday with the TWB system first. Now, first of all, it's incredible. Yes, on Friday, when we the market opens here, I did say that if the market goes down, it may go down to pivot two, and that's 34,208. And very incredibly, the day low of the day was 34,207. So it's exactly spot on based on our system. That means that when the market opened at 7 a.m. in the morning, with this number, 34,208 is already available on the system. And yet the market really goes down as if that they know that this number actually exists. And of course, you can see that the KSI was red in color and it was uptick rate. So we know that the market will be coming off. And of course, plus the market purposely touched MLP and rejected it. This confirmed the sell on Friday. So that is the reason why uh, from Friday, we were all mostly short sellers. 
So let's take a look what happened during the intraday. The intraday, the market was ding-donging around the opening price. Then it did try to go higher. But once it hit the KTR plus one, you notice that my stars appear. When my stars appear, that means that there'll be some form of resistance in the market and true be told, the market came off. Now in the cash market, when it opened, right, there was some buying all the way up, but you notice that when it hit the MLP at 34,838, it got itself very strongly resisted. And because of that itself, when the market pulls back below the pivot, it becomes the sell and the market sell down all the way and hit our KT, uh, our pivot two perfectly as if that you know that it exists. So once again, all these numbers are made available on your screen. As long as you follow, you should be doing fine. Now, this is Go on Friday. Now, Go on Friday was a, was a doji directional day and the KSI was red. So we know that the market will be favoring the sell side, even though there were no blue bars in the market, but the market still favors sell side. So when the market couldn't go past MLP at 1839, the market actually goes down. And I suspect that this is where it stopped because this is the BNB um, RL level. So let's take a look what happened on the market. You can see that the market try its best to um, hang around opening price. Then the star appear where you put the two lines, the high and the low. And of course, once the market break it straight away, you see it go actually plunge all the way down. Then after that, the market did try to recover, but it couldn't sustain. And then again, because we need to extend the chart, right? And once again, it breaks down, the market continue to fall again. All right, so this tells you a lot of why we know why the goal cannot go higher? Why are we shorting goal even though fundamental is actually banning should or goal? All these things tells you and speak volume to you, yeah? So traders, be very careful of what you have right now. If you're not able to make money on a regular basis, why don't consider to join us full-time? Now let's look at some local and overseas news around. It's very, very important. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm having some... Uh, some technical issue once again on my screen here. Just give me a moment, guys. Okay. Now, Tokyo hits record 10,000 COVID cases. Now, Japan reported more than 50,000 infection for the first time. In the first time, all right. So what is happening right here now? In the capital of Japan is Tokyo, right? Now there are 11,000 new cases. And this is really very scary. Okay, very, very scary. Because last Friday was about 9,600. And now it has gained, uh, it's multiplying in almost like a double effect. So now the thing is that in Tokyo itself, three people has passed on and now two of them in serious condition. Now, myself is a COVID uh, positive um, patient myself. And I can tell you this, after this time round, it's really no joke. All right, even though I have my vaccination done, but I can feel the pain in it. And that's, that's the reason why, even though I'm supposed to be resting, I'm still doing MAO because I want to keep myself in the, in the positive light. And I want to tell myself that no matter how I shouldn't do, you know, try to take the easier way out because this virus itself is quite dangerous. Trust me on this. All right, so what happened now in, in the Japan now, the 34.3% of the hospital bed are already utilized by COVID patients. And of course, if this day, it hits 50%, this is going to ring the alarm bell and this can get very serious for Japan. So this is something to take note of. And uh, for Japan, although 70%, 78% of them are fully vaccinated, but booster shot is only 1.5%. So that is pretty worry for, worrisome for the Japan market, yeah? Now, of course, what is even much great, great, uh, scarier now will be the, the, the current so-called aggression in the Russia-US um, uh, area, where by now the Secretary of State, uh, Blinken, is warning that right, there could be um, severe repercussion if, let's say, any single Russian force their way into Ukraine. Now, the thing is this, the US has stressed that they will impose sanctions on Russia if this thing continues. But Russia itself is actually inching. So this is going to be a problem here and that's why we're watching this very very closely. And of course UK also warned, warned Russia and said that they could fear they could face severe sanctions if let's say they install the Ukraine puppet regime. 
So again, of course, now see now everybody is like watching Russia. And the thing is this: if you look carefully, Russia report is that they are because the, the foreign power are pushing their territory nearer into uh, Ukraine, and that's why Russia getting upset. But of course, to the to UK and US, they feel that right, they are not doing it wrong, and now they are telling Russia not to do anything further. So it's like a bit of like you know, basically right. Anybody, if anyone make a mistake during their um, their standing position around the borders, like example, someone just do a really a silly fire across what the other side, even though it was not meant to be, things can get very scary. So that's why I did tell my friends around me to just put some sell stop in case the market trigger sudden selling. All right. <laughs> Okay, we have some uh, reply straight away from Anthony said that, you know, UK some may not be able to carry out what they say. Well, <laughs> I'll leave it down there, yeah? So now the thing is this, uh, do note that uh, uh, Britain has just supplied 2,000 missiles and a team of military trainers to Ukraine. And then they're telling them to be, you know, attacking themselves. So things are getting a bit scary in the uh, that front. All right, so this is what's happening right now. And the plot is getting a little bit concerning, yeah? Okay, so we have that for global news. Let's look at something more into the market side. Now, inflation surge could push the Federal Reserve into more than four rate hikes this year by Goldman Sachs. Now, if you actually look at Goldman Sachs' recent um, market uh, when they put their earnings right, you'll be surprised that Goldman Sachs has been down in terms of their earnings for their clients for the second quarter in a row. In fact, it's the last quarter when the market was doing very well for the month of October to December, Goldman Sachs lost in a way, half a billion dollars in stock trading. Now think about this, if the market is so good, how come they are losing money? So the only way is that they're losing money is because probably they are short in the market. And probably now, finally, after many months of shorting, they are now making some money because the stock market is down by 8% from the all-time high. But of course, if you look at it from quarter to quarter, I believe that the market must drop by another 10% or more so that they can break even, yeah? So with that, it's all right. And that's why you can see Goldman Sachs is very, very, uh, seemingly very um, optimistic to expect there'll be four rate hikes and even more. And they even say that, right, the balance sheet may cut by 100 billion. Now do note in 2018, when they, we have the taper, uh, taper tantrum, that time is all right, when US Federal Reserve just reduced it by $10 billion per month, the market already lose more than 15%. So imagine if let's say the Federal Reserve reduce it by 100 billion per month, I think the market will sell big time. So I really feel that Goldman Sachs is trying to really tell the whole world that to sell in terms of to benefit themselves. There's a bit of bias in my own personal opinion. What do you think? Do you think that Goldman Sachs, your own personal opinion, please key your, answer, your comment right now into the group chat. I would like to you to, I would like to see whether what's, what do you think, yeah? Now, the thing is this, they are saying now, right, the traders are pricing in as much as 95% pricing in a rate hike in March. Oh, my God. And in fact, 85% are pricing in four by 2022. And of course, there could be even a chance of fifth rate hike by some traders by the CME Federal Watch Gauge. I think this is a little bit too exaggerating and I feel that right this is a bit of manipulated numbers so I don't think so it was in my opinion it's all right I don't think the U.S. can take more than three rate hike in a single year and I think that if once is this all going in this will crash the market so I don't think so but I do as I already been saying that the market will down by 15 percent I've been sticking there with this I've been saying this quite a while and I think that, that this will happen. So I, I don't think this will happen for US market, but of course, Goldman Sachs, right? So they are saying that now they expect the process will take the 100 billion off from the monthly increment. And this will take about two and a half years to bring it down to $6.6 .6 trillion for the balance sheet. Because now the current balance sheet now is about nearly $9 trillion. So imagine, imagine, just think about this. If they remove 3 trillion from the market, do you know that the stock market will drop how fast and how badly is this? So why would they want to do this at this right now when everybody are actually pretty positive? In fact, their own analyst, David Costin, is looking at the S&P to be up to 5,300. So something is not very correct. It's either that David Costin is not receiving a memo from this side or somehow rather there are two camps in Goldman Sachs or basically one say A, one say B. So no matter where the market go, the market will be correct. So that is what I'm seeing right now. 
Now, will the crude oil be the one sacrifice to be much higher? I believe it is possible. Now, apparently now there are more and more people calling for crude oil to hit $100. Now, it happened back in 2008 when crude oil went up all the way from uh, this $65 to $100 to $147 US dollars back then. So if you remember when that happened itself, right, that also inevitably uh, crashed the market back in 2008 Lehman crisis. Now, the reason is because they say that the tight supply is one. The next thing is the Ukraine border issue. And of course, main thing is that, right, they feel that, right, this, um, this disruption in the supply chain itself is going to prolong longer than expected. And of course, now recently, the, the supply is also reducing a bit and the demand is increasing. So all these things itself will likely push the crude oil higher to $100. Now, my personal take is this. I believe that crude oil will go to about $92 to $94. To hit $100 is going to be pure speculation, meaning that it's, just, it's not going to be buying because of reality, but it's just buying because short covering and potentially pure speculation that we have seen before in 2008. And if you remember, after that itself in 2011, that was where gold price shoot up all the way to all time high. And I kind of believe that, right, this may actually be happening again. Yeah. So watch out for this. Now, of course, while one market is going up, the other market that is coming off is Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is down by 8%. Now, I have already been calling for Bitcoin to sell. At the time when it was 69,000, I say sell Bitcoin. Hit 50,000, I maintain sell Bitcoin. Hit 40,000, I still maintain sell Bitcoin because I believe Bitcoin will go down to 34,000. Yes, indeed. I believe that Bitcoin will go down to 34,000. So from 69, I say it will drop to 50, which happened. Then I say that it will drop to 40, which also happened. Then I mentioned that it will go down to 34,000. And at 34,000, I say it will bottom up a bit. It may recover back to about 38,000. And then the selling will bring it down all the way to about 30,000. Yes, indeed. I believe that Bitcoin will continue to fall to 30,000. Yes, I believe that Bitcoin will continue to fall to about 30,000. Now, why am I so bearish? Because like I said, the tapering process will take away all the easy three money policy from the system. And that's the reason why you can see the stock market is coming down. So with the stock market going to come, it's, going, it's coming down, naturally it's all right. What will likely be happening is that the all the high risk assets will be also profiting. And of course, the highest risk asset now as moment you can see in the chart is obviously is cryptocurrency. So I believe that Bitcoin will recover this time around just a temporary rebound because it come off quite a fair bit. But after that, it's all right. Bitcoin will be coming down again. So let me just show you a chart right now to make it easier for you to remember and um, recall next time you happen to see it. Let me just show it to you right now. All right, if you agree that I my, my, my drawing, if you agree with my drawing, let me know you agree. If you think that you agree, key the word agree. If you disagree, key the word disagree. Yeah? I want to see how many of us is on which side of the camp. All right, let me know. Okay, so this is the Bitcoin chart right now. Now you can see that I have drawn my lines long time ago and I never reduced, change it. Yeah, so uh, let me just show to you more in detail. Okay, can you see right now? Yeah, indeed, this is what I'm seeing right now on the chart, um, I believe that, right, this, um, the Bitcoin now from 69,000 that was here, I said that it will go down to 50,000, which really happened, 50,000. And then after that, I mentioned that it will go down to 40,000, which also really happened. Then I said that from 40,000, it will drop down all the way to 34,000, which also had just happened. So now what I believe is that the Bitcoin will likely rebound. Yes, you heard me correctly. I believe that the Bitcoin will rebound a little bit back to about 38,000. Then from 38,000, it will come back down again. And this time around go for 30,000. All right, it may go even lower to 28 or 29,000, but it's somewhere around here. 
So I believe that this will happen. And maybe when you see that, then maybe we can look at it again. Now, of course, the crazy part of the whole thing is that, of course, in terms of technical analysis, if things get really, really, really drastic, it is possible for the market to um, come down all the way to this point here. And that's 21,000 or 22,000 to be precise, 22,000. Now, if you if ever Bitcoin is to come down to 22,000, I think that's will be the best time to buy a lot of Bitcoin because that is where I think you'll bottom up and about maybe uh, another few years, it will be back to about 80,000. So that's why I say that if ever things get too drastic, who knows, Bitcoin may go down to 22,000 and then that will be the absolute bottom for it to go all the way up again to maybe 82,000. So you can take down this piece of uh, information. You can see whether I'm right by the end of the day. So of course, all these are just personal forecasts. I can be wrong. So let's see whether uh, whether this uh, today sharing will weigh its, uh, have its weights uh, <laughs> as we go along. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Now, once again, today is a uh, live sharing right now. If you like what I'm sharing right now, do like and share with your friends so that more people can come on board and listen. It's not a preview, yeah? So you can listen. You can still there. Okay, you can ask our friends to take a look and watch what I have to share later today. Yeah. Okay, so the thing is this, they are saying that now that the people are getting worried and because um, there are more people banning the usage of cryptocurrency and then more government control and stuff like that. But of course, some analysts are looking at much lower figure. As you can see, when the market is up, every analyst say it will be high, 80,000, 120,000, 250,000. But when the price is down, then the analysts will tell you that, oh, no, 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 now we're looking at local number. So isn't that always the same thing? So today, I don't think it will go down. In fact, as I said, 34,000 should be the base right now. It will likely rebound to about 38,000. But then after that, from 38,000, it will go back down to 30,000. So be very careful on this wave down, yeah? So now, apparently, they are also saying that, right, the secondary support itself for 30,000. And they feel that, right, the market now could have more downside. So the reason is because now about 600 to 700 million dollars are lost every day because of the way Bitcoin coming down. And um, some long-term holders are selling. Okay, in fact, very, very unusual, but some of the long-term people are doing that. Okay, it's uh, FICO, right? as I mentioned to you, right? My, my view is this, if you can go down to 22,000, I think it's a very good time to buy. 19,000, I don't know, but 22,000 technically is a very good price to buy. Is Bitcoin a scam? Many accounts got hacked and stolen. Well, we saw it happen recently on an exchange, but I think they already reimbursed back. So I don't know. I cannot uh, tell you it's not. But I can say that, right, if this is going to be a scam, it's going to be a bigger scam because there's so many countries has adopted it as a legal tender. I, I, cannot be, I cannot think that it will happen. But if you're telling me now that there's a cryptocurrency that's going to be like utilized for the whole world, I don't think so, yeah? So all I can say is this, well... I would speculate, but I believe that if you don't mind taking some risk, if the price comes down to 30000 or even lower, you can consider just buy some and just keep. I mean, take it as a form of a, spec a speculative asset than versus a day-to-day -day thingy itself. Yeah. All right. So now let's look at some very alternate market views before we look at the charts, huh, shall we? Now, this is my personal chart that I draw. I like to take you to let you go through with me and let you understand what am I looking now in the market. Huh? Let's take a look. Now, what I did was that I take 2018 S&P 500 high, let's put as A. Then what I did, I connected to B. Now, B is the 2020 high before the pandemic happened. Then I did an extrapolation by moving it forward, which is C. So you notice that when the market hits C, the market really pulled back down as what you can see, right? Then if you continue to extend this, which is D, you can see that the market really, really stopped there and still come back down. But interestingly, is that right? I took um, X and Y combined, I extrapolate, I have the technical uptrend of the market. So now what is crazy is that when the market breaks here, which is E, on here, which is E, you notice that the market this time around did not pull back further and start to move up all the way. That was because the Federal Reserve put in trillions of dollars into the system. Okay, got an idea now? Okay, I clean up first. Now, what is happening is this. When I take this point B, 
and I followed it up with some, right? You can see that the market, right, really hit a very beautiful top recently. So this actually shows that the market got resisted. And then if you took these two figure in and I extend it, right, I noticed that the market break down recently. All right. So now if I take A and B extension, I will have this trend line now. Can you take a look? This is a trend line that I have. I felt that, right, if the market is to eventually break down, the selling could bring the S&P down all the way to 4,000 level. And 4,000 level, if you look at it, is actually coincide with the 61.8 of the recent run from the bottom to the, the highest point. So what I suspect is that, right, the market may actually be down to 4,000 point in the near term. Now the market is trading at 4,397. I suspect that the market may rebound to about 4,450. But after that, it's all right. The market may drop all the way down to 4,000 level. Now this is actually pretty, uh, 4,001 to be precise. This actually is quite scary because that's a 10% drop. And I suspect that this may have be happening in the next few weeks if I'm actually correct. So that is the reason why I felt that, right, be very careful. We should have a bounce today. Yeah, because the market is really oversold. You can see that the market is really oversold. And every time the market is very oversold, the market generally will rebound. But after that itself, right, if the rebound cannot stay or sustain, the next wave of selling will be even worse. And that's my reason why I say the market may be coming down to about 4,100 to 4,000 region. So that is why I want you to be very careful. But once we hit this point here, and if the market can stay stabilized, I suspect the market may recover once again. All right. I suspect that the market may recover once again. So traders, please take note of that. Huh? There's two sides of the coin here now. I suspect there'll be pullback in about a few months to come, and then there'll be a bottoming out for the recovery again. Okay. All right. So to just do it a simple drawing, so that I will not, uh, you know, make you confused. It's something like this, then like this, then like this. Okay. So this will be a span of over the next six months. Yeah. Okay. So let's see whether am I right by six months down the road. Okay. So just a personal sharing here. No need to uh, get in too much detail to that. That's hopefully you, you make some sense. Okay, now the thing that why am I kind of worried for the next few months is the margin debt. Now, this was covered back uh, some time ago in uh, 2019. Now, this time round itself, right, the margin debt is means the amount of money that people utilize in borrowed form to buy stocks. So you can see that whenever the margin debt is going up, right, people are buying, uh, borrowing money, the stock market generally follows. So as long as more people are buying, I mean, are borrowing, the stock market generally follows. But if you notice carefully, when the margin debt actually come off, especially a spike downwards, the stock market also reacted according to plan. So the problem is that now, can you see that the margin debt is coming off and the stock market itself is not really coming off the same magnitude. So I kind of suspect that, right, the stock market now will be coming off a little bit. And of course, in terms of, uh, you know, pattern, we should see about 4,000. And that's the reason why I say the S&P 500 <coughs> in the next few months might be <coughs> coming down. Sorry for that. I'm still having a bit of COVID here right now. So that's why I'm having this cough. Apologize on that. Okay. So be careful on this, the margin debt, because once they start to liquefy their position in the market, right, meaning they don't want to hold too much loan, <coughs> they will sell the stock market portfolio to reduce their cost and then when that happens itself one leads to the other the selling will come all right so that's the reason why the margin debt is kind of be careful we'll be very careful on this now the one that really really is kind of scary now is this is the buffer indicator now we talk about this when it was about probably at this area and of course at time i did say that even though the time when it was here it was kind of overbought already we still think that the market will go higher because there was no tapering. And I did say that Uncle Sam is still pumping money, so the market will not come down. Now, the market now has hit over valuation, and this is even higher than the 1999 internet bubble. 
And this time round, we have tapering on the way, we have interest rate environment on the way. So if you remember back in 1999, it was the same thing. There was interest rate hiking, there were liquidity withdrawn from the market. And of course, that was where the NASDAQ crashed down by almost 85%. Now, I don't think this time round we will have an 85% crash. I believe that this time round we will have a 10 to 15% pullback. Now, anything worse than that will be 20% at most. So I suspect that right, the market will be near a high, it's at a high level. And now we have two, we are now 211% in terms of ratio. This is actually much, much higher by 64% in terms of the long-term trend line. So with all these things itself telling us, right, a pullback in the near term is kind of possible. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin, for the message. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm trying to recover ASAP. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. We have about 80 people now online watching this. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. All right, so take note of the market here, guys. We are definitely at a very overvalued position right now. And I suspect that the market has about 5 more percent to drop after the after this rebound, yeah? I repeat myself for the fifth time today. I suspect the market will rebound these two days before the market return to sell off again. So this one, please kindly take note, yeah? Kindly don't change my words around because I'm calling for buy these few days. And then maybe the market will come back to sell again. Okay, the market may come back to sell again later. Not now, yeah? Not now. So be very clear on that. Thank you very much. Now, of course, if you are into a little bit much more easier data, this is a Schiller PE ratio. Now, Schiller PE ratio is the from obviously from the guy Schiller. All right, he, uh, there is this PE ratio that people utilize, but that one is a little bit too um, general. So this guy used the Schiller PE ratio. And of course, back in 1999, when he said that the Shilly P ratio was much, much too high. And of course, that was where it was pretty spot on. The market crashed down. Now, the thing is this, as of now, the Shilly P ratio is at 37.19. Now, this is not anywhere near to the uh, high back in 1999. But it is much, much higher as compared to the last 140 years. 140 years. So if you look at it itself, right, um, with the tapering coming in, with the interest rate environment coming in, it's kind of no-brainer that we do expect the market to pull back by 10 to 15% from where we are today. So that's why I keep on reiterating to you, I believe that the S&P 500 may be dropping down to 4,100 as compared to now 4,500 level. But of course, uh, like I say again, the fifth time, sixth time now, the market will pull up first a little bit because we have so oversold, the market may rebound before coming off, yeah? Now, this is something that I captured from CNBC, and this is kind of very scary information for you to take note. Now, of course, Larry William is very famous, not this guy, this Jim Kramer. Larry, Larry William is famous for his seasonal pattern, and one of the seasonal patterns that he actually presented through the mouth of this uh, Jim Kramer is this thing called a cycle forecast, and it seems to be telling you that be careful because the month of February, the month of February, there could be a market peak and then the market might be selling down quite drastically until March. Now, of course, now the market has already sold down in January. So whether or not is this accurate, I'll leave it to you to decide. But in my perspective itself, right, I believe February will have some selling because of the earnings won't be fantastic. The earnings will be good for last quarter, but the forecast will be bad. And if one says this, the other one will follow. If you remember, this can be a domino effect. And that's the reason why I suspect that the month of February to be pretty bad, yeah? Yeah, okay, so let's take note of that. Yeah, indeed, Jim Kramer, his view usually is kind of wrong, but this time around, he utilized uh, Larry Williams' uh, uh, data. So I give Larry Williams the benefit of the doubt, and it happened to be coincide with my view. So that's why I'm sharing this. But a part of that itself, Jim Kramer, his view on by his own analysis, <laughs> I will leave it there. I'm not there to judge him because Anyway, he's actually on CNBC, not me. So maybe he's better, yeah? So I'll let the YouTube decide, yeah? Okay, thanks, Liu. Okay, all right. So let's look at the charts right now. The bull goes moo, the bear goes drew, and the lemming go, it could be different this time. Let's go, guys. Look at the charts right now. Now, uh, first of all, remember, I did say that the Chinese stock market will likely be rebounding the next two days, and now it seems to be happening. Now, this morning, the China market itself gapped down because obviously the US market was bad, and it did go down, 
but now it seems to have found some strength upwards and now it's going to test the important 15,510 level and that is an MA30. So if the market can break up itself, right, I suspect that it may bring the market a bit higher to this point here and that's about 15,700 level. Now, there are ongoing news right now in Evergrande. I'm sorry, Evergrande is a number two property, real estate property, uh, real estate company in China. And of course, until now, Evergrande has not really committed themselves to really repay their, their, their loans and their outstanding um, bond, ye bond yields. Yeah. So the thing is this now, I just heard that there is the number one, uh, number one uh, real estate in China, some county says that right, they are also having ca credit cash crunch right now. So not too sure is it because they, they decided to, since the Evergrande not paying, so we don't pay, right? Or is it really something serious going on? So I suspect that, right, this may actually uh, leave the, become the uh, catalyst to bring, to bring the market back down again in the near term. So, um, okay, I just have uh, Liu sharing with us that Chinese developer Yu Zhou, Yu Zhou, group, all right, likely to delay the $105 million bond payment, yeah? So I suspect that this might happen, guys, is that the market may push up first for the, to trap and trap some of the buyers. And then after that, right, if the market couldn't go past the resistance, that could be resume of selling again, and this could be quite terrible. So um, traders just take note of that, be very careful this round. There could be some relief buying, but then the market may sell again. All right, let's look at the US market right now for today. Now for the US market for today, based on our TWB system, uh, it's pretty clear today that we should have some upside movement, right? Now the MLP today is 34,439 and the uh, pivot two is 34,400, a uh, pivot one, sorry. So above OP, above pivot one is a buy, above MLP is a buy. So today, in my opinion, the market is a buy and that's why this morning we will be calling for buy. And that's why this morning already we've been calling for a buy. And also for today's MAO, the caption is we expect a rebound today. And it's all happening right now. And of course, the selling seems to be down tick a little bit. So that means that there will be some resistance on the top, but uh, it will not be a lot. So where will be the best resistance for today? Let's take a look right now. The best resistance for today. Let's take a look. Okay, so what you are seeing on the screen right now, I suspect the market is have already crossed MLP and the market has started to support it nicely. So I think the first target that the market will be going up will be 34,532. I think that the Dow Jones will be able to trigger this level in the afternoon by about 5 to 6 p.m. And with the stroke of luck itself, right, the market may continue to go higher and the market may go to as much as 34,660 today. Now, once it hit there itself, I believe that there could be some profit taking. So traders, if let's say the um, Dow Jones do go to 34,660, do expect some profit taking to come in, yeah? Take note of that. Okay, that is the Dow Jones. Let's look at the NASDAQ, shall we? Now the NASDAQ is showing the same thing also, the NASDAQ, yeah. The NASDAQ now is actually showing that the market is now above MLP and also above the pivot one. And um, most likely it will go higher a little bit if you cross the MLP at 14,583. So where will be the best resistance level for today? Let's take a look. Now, all these numbers are all made available on your screen in the market. So that's why this morning when we are buying NASDAQ, right, you can see the market very fast shoot up, cross the pivot one. That's why it's a stronger buy. So now we suspect that there will be some resistance at 14,583 because that is the MLP and you can see the market couldn't go past it at all. Now, if the market is going any higher, where could it be, right? Mm, that's a very good question to ask me. So let's take a look back at the day chart because I don't have anything on the intraday chart anymore. So let's look at the day chart again. Now, if you ask me itself, right, maybe the maximum I believe that the market could be rebounding will be somewhere near here. 
and uh, this is about 14,730. So if there's going to be any more upside itself, I believe that 14,730 should be the strongest resistance for the next few days. The market may purposely touch this figure and then pull down again. So that's why watch out for 14,730 because I believe that that should be the maximum run up from where we are right now. Okay, so take note of that 14,730 on the NASDAQ in this coming week, yeah, this week. Now, S&P 500 is also behaving the same thing. It's also above the pivot one and it's actually above MLP. Now, for, for S&P, we've been looking to buy because our KSI was turning green. So that's why anytime when we saw the market shows any buy signal, we know that it may be going up. Now, of course, if the market push higher, I suspect the S&P could be able to touch this point here. And that is about 14, uh, 44.64. 44.64. Now we are 44.33, so I believe that there's another 34 points to go. So I suspect that S&P may go to 44.64 this round, yeah? So for us, we have been buying S&P over the last few days, and of course, now we are seeing some profits. So 44.64 should be a very good level to do some profit taking, okay? Now for Hong Kong. Now, obviously, it's all right. Today, Hong Kong is brilliant because the Hong Kong market actually gap down this morning. But once it hit the pivot two, you notice that it stopped there beautifully as if they recognize it. So if the Hong Kong market is a push higher, it may go to touch MLP and that's 24,821. Now, current price is 700. So I suspect that in the afternoon session, right, if the NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P do go higher, Hang Seng should be able to go to 24,821 level. Now, for you to push all the way to MA200, it's not impossible. It's just that it's going to be much tougher than usual, yeah? Let's to show to you the impact of the pivot this morning. You can see that the market really followed it to the T. The market drunk came down all the way, touches the pivot beautifully, exactly, no more, no less. And then after that itself, found the base, and rebounded very nice. So I suspect the market is ding donging right now because now it's at stuck at the KTR plus one beautifully at 24,746. But now the last uh, half an hour is staying above OP. So by right, we should see the market going back up again to 24,746. And if we can straw of luck again, we may see 24,825 traded. But once we reach down there, it's all right. I believe that there should be some profit taking. So traders, do consider to take profit as we climb up this because the market is still not in the um, right level to be buying to buy from long term because I think the market is still going to go down. Now let's look at the Japan market, shall we? Now the Japanese market today, this morning, we have been calling for buy already. Why? Because the market opens above the pivot one, so it's a classic buy and the market is above MLP, it's a buy. So that's why we expected the market to go higher. And because it's a DJDD, right? Doji directional day, and the KSI has went, although it's a great bar, but it's down tick, we suspected that the, the Nikkei will go higher, and now indeed Nikkei is trading up. So how high will the Nikkei be able to go? I suspect the Nikkei will be able to come up all the way here itself. Let me just show, share this with you. Um, I suspect that Nikkei may be able to come down up to here, and that is about um, 27,610. Now, the Nikkei now is 27,484, so another 130 points should be quite feasible and possible. But once we reach there, it's all right. Please be careful. The market may take some profit. 27,610. Yeah, take note of that, yeah? Okay, DAX now, let's take a look now. DAX has came down ferociously on last Friday, and I suspect that the market will gap down later, somewhere around here. But after that, the market may recover. The market may recover back to 15,600 series. So I suspect that it may gap down to about 15,320 area, but then after that, the market may rebound. So watch out for this on DAX. Let's see whether I might write to, by today. Yeah? All right, crude oil. Now, I believe crude oil is going to go higher, and I still stay firm that crude oil should be able to go up to $89. Uh, 
and 80 cents. I suspect that crude oil will be able to hit 89 dollars and 80 cents in the next few days. Yes, indeed. Because the boys are still buying, it's relentless of buying, the demand is there, the supply is seemingly limited. And then the BNB from our chart shows that 89.80 is feasible. So I suspect that crude oil will go higher. Now, if crude oil goes higher, naturally the stock market will also be going higher. So that's the reason why we are all now long in the market for equity market. So take note again, we are now long in the equity market. Yeah, we are long in the market now for the next two, three days. Yeah. Okay, so let me just uh, reiterate, we are long in the equity market right now because we expect a technical rebound. Today and tomorrow, but um, overall, we are looking at the SP to drop back to 4,100 level by late March. All right, so now the SP, now the SP is at um, 4,400 level. We expect it to go up to 4,450 first before profit taking resume. Okay, so I've given you my view right now in writing so that you know there'll be no confusion. And also I also don't want people to that misunderstand what I say. And then after that, they start to put stuff and in do my words, yeah. Okay. All right, so we have covered the indices. Let's look at the commodities right now with crude oil done. Let's look at gold. Now, for gold market itself, right, I suspect gold will be going up also these two days. I suspect that gold will go up these two days. Now, gold has now traded above even one and it's above ML, it's about near MLP level. So I believe that gold price will be going up today and uh, it should be going back to retest the 1846 level, which is the KCB level. Now, of course, with any uh, any push up luck, we may see all the way to 1859. But I will want to warn you once the gold price hit that point, there should be profit taking. There should be profit taking coming on again. Because if the equity market is coming down, most likely the crude oil will also come down. So the gold will also come off at the same time. So do take note of that itself. The market may be going up first and then there could be selling in the market. So please be very careful, right? Because the market uh, may hit a high and pull back. Now, if let's say, if I were to put this as a perspective here itself, then I believe that this time around the, the goal may come back down all the way to the 1800 level or more if the selling is drastic. My view is that it may come down even more to maybe 1700 level if things get too, 1700 level if things get a bit too, too drastic. Of course, when that happens, we'll be talking about this, but um, I believe that there should be a peak around here in Selva, 1859 area or somewhere around there. Okay, so be, be very careful with this, um, this condition right now for gold, yeah? All right, silver. Now, silver is a speculative uh, asset, and it's one of the reasons why I say that you can buy silver for speculation, but um, silver already hit my first target when it was trading here, as I remember. I say that silver will go to $24.47, and beautifully, the market really hit $24.47, and now it pulled back, exactly as what we forecasted last week, so, right, remember? So if you think that we, if you remember that I said this, please keep the word silver spot on because we were very clear that we believe that the silver price will hit the $24.47. Remember that? Yes. So now the thing is this, how, what I think about silver, I believe that silver will find strength later. And once it breaks above the P2 for today, I believe silver is going to go up again. And this time around, silver should be able to test $24.00 and 79 cents, okay? Silver should be able to go higher. That means it's another 3% from where we are right now. Silver should be able to go higher. Now, I don't think silver can go to $25 this round. I believe that after that, the market will pull back. If I say I'm right, it may bring the silver back down to $21, 
before the ultimatum move that may go up to all the way to $30, but not now. Yeah, I believe that this will take a while. I don't think silver will be, um, in the near term, will be rushing up too fast. Yeah, I don't think so, yeah. Okay. All right, so that is my view on silver. And let's, let's look at the last two market, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now for Ethereum, I already told you guys that Ethereum will come down to hit my target level and that's 2292, remember? I told you guys that it will come down to about 2292 because that is my KCV level. And incredibly, it really, really happened perfectly at the level that I mentioned and rebounded. So all these numbers are made available by the system itself. We did not do any drawing, it's all by the system. So what do I suspect will happen now? Yes, I suspect that the uh, Ethereum will go back up a bit, okay, a bit higher. By luck, you may see somewhere around here. And that's about 2,800 level, okay? I think that this may actually go back up. Now it's 2,456, we may see 2,800. But after that is all right, I suspect it may come down again. And this time around, it may go to as low as 1850. Now 1850 will be a very good time to buy some Ethereum because that'll be three times lower than the all-time high. Now anything that's three times lower than all-time high, I think that is a very good level to watch out for. And this may bring it back up again. All right, so 1850 will be a very good level to buy. If you want to buy now for the current recovery first no problem but in terms of longer haul maybe you should let it drop further to buy okay that is a uh, bitcoin so uh, sorry this was ethereum yeah okay how about bitcoin Now, Bitcoin has also came down to my level of 34,000 already, all right? The 33,894, you see that the system is so beautiful. It predicted the number exactly 33,890 level. Now it's at 35,290. Now we have bought some Bitcoin a little bit just for speculative reason. Suspect that Bitcoin should be able to go back to about 37,000 to 38,000 this time around. But after that, right, we suspect that Bitcoin will go back down again. And I told you, right, it's about 31,000. That's where it should get pretty safer. And of course, if drastic enough, we may see even 28K, but I don't think so this will happen. I believe that 31,000 will be the base level and then we may see some again rebound. So for Bitcoin itself, right, um, at current now, this price at 35,300, yes, it may go back to 37,000, just a quick one because it's over, very overly sold. But after that itself, the market should be pulling back down and this time around is about 31,000 to 28,000. Yeah, so do take note of all these numbers because this is what I feel might be happening. So hopefully that I'm right, okay? All right, so with that itself, that is gonna to end today's uh, MAO. And let me just refresh your memory once again. Main thing is we suspect that today and tomorrow, the US stock market may do an intermittent recovery. Then after that, the selling may resume again. And we suspect that right in month of February, the market will sell stronger than usual because I suspect that the earnings will be good, but the forecast for the coming quarter will be bad. And a lot of uh, analysts will write down their expectation and market may sell. So Netflix is the first one to the, the, the first one to got hit. I believe the next one will be Amazon. And uh, of course, uh, potentially itself, it could be even Alphabet. All right. So let's see whether I'm right and hopefully that you guys make money today and tomorrow. Remember, we have FOMC this coming Tuesday, Wednesday. Be very careful. It's Cal signing off. Bye-bye.